Hey everybody, so today is an interesting day because I'm actually going to go meet with someone to pick up a rainbow boa that was born without eyes. So the story behind this rainbow boa is that my friend Ashley was shopping around at a local reptile expo, and at this vendor's table were quite a few Brazilian rainbow boa babies for sale, and she noticed one of them didn't have any eyes. So she brought it up to the vendor, who was totally surprised, didn't even notice it. My guess is the vendor was selling those for a friend, because I don't know how you wouldn't notice one of your snakes doesn't have eyes. So anyway, she did end up bringing it home with her anyway. Unfortunately, she can't get this snake to eat. I guess, which is understandable because he is blind and he was born that way and she's worried that he's starting to lose weight. He isn't looking as good as he should for his age. And so she asked, and don't, don't get me wrong, she's been taking wonderful care of the snake. She just can't get it to eat. So she asked if we could take it in and try to get it feeding. And we said, yes, we would. Although I'm not going to lie, we are pretty nervous and I, I hope Hope that it makes it although I don't want to get my hopes up a lot anyway I'm gonna go pick up this snake it won't be the only no-eyed snake we have thanks to nearly headless Nick so I have high hopes that we can do good work with this snake too this is live pinky attempt number one I'm not worried about getting too close to him because he can't see me but look at that he's really close to the pinky he's smelling it and he overshot it dude it's underneath you. Eat the mouse. Sorry, I know the video quality isn't very good. I don't want to take the lid off, lid off though, because I think the vibrations may spook him. So we're going to have to leave him be. He's back near the pinky. Oh, yeah, doesn't that smell good? You should eat that. Eat that pinky, please. Well, I gave up on the live pinky, and I force-fed him a small fuzzy. Come on, dude. I got it down and he's just kind of sitting there, not sure what to do with it. So I'm really hoping he uh, finishes eating this and he at least has a meal in his belly because he is pretty thin, but it's understandable because he hasn't wanted to eat in a while. Oh, cool. He's closing his mouth around it. There you go. Can you see him contracting his muscles? He's kind of scrunching up right here. And then soon, hopefully, he stretches his head out this way to gulp that mouse down. Come on, dude. Oh, he's scrunching up a little bit more right there. Come on, stretch your head out. Don't spit it back out. Come on, oh, hey, he took it. Nice, there you go. You did decide to eat it, all right. Well, we had to force feed it, but we got a meal in him. Don't take my hand with you, please. Wow. So yes, we're making pizza, but we decided to about. feed this little guy and it was like barely in his mouth and he started eating it. So I think he's really close to eating on his own. I don't know about you. Well, I think the biggest thing is just getting him to understand there's food there. Yeah, I think you're right. Man, I'm so proud of you. You're eating upside down. <laughs> Curly Q it. I don't, I don't he's, know he's what he's- He's constricting it now. Really? All right, I'm gonna put this little guy back. I kind of want to show you. He's in quarantine here, but what? How how blind snakes react when you put them back in their enclosure? It's interesting. They seem to flip upside down a lot more often than other snakes do. I think it's just a blind snake thing. Like I said, it's not like a spider ball python neurological issue. But I do have to be kind of careful with how I put him in his enclosure. Come on, dude. I have to help him find his cave. It's right in there. No, nope, no, nope, it's right. There, and he'll, he'll curl up there for the rest of the night. Oh, there's water dish. Yeah, he also likes to hang out underneath his water dish, which is also fine because, I mean, it's hollow underneath, so it's a perfect little cave for him. But he's doing really well, actually. I'm really surprised. Well, Rainbow Boa update. He's not in here. I just, there's isopods that I was watching run around and springtails and stuff. But look at this. He's eating! Not completely on his own yet. I did have to put the pinky in his mouth, but that seems to be all I have to do. And then he just takes over from there. But look, he's so much fuller now. He's nice and shiny. He's looking great. And he's eating almost on his own. Next step is just for him to take it on his own too. 
So here's an interesting update. We've had him for about two months now, and I just barely opened his mouth and put the mouse in, and he constricted it. He's completely wrapped around it. That's the biggest food response I've ever seen from him so far. Maybe we're one step closer to him eating on his own. Well, now that we know that our little dude is gonna make it, let me officially introduce you to our new no-eyed Brazilian rainbow boa. Here he is, well, he's, he's in here. This is his quarantine bin. And we usually use, I'm gonna find him in here. Is he under his water? Nope. We usually use like paper towels for quarantine, but since this species needs, as our friend Dave Kaufman puts it, perma-wet bedding, where it has to be permanently damp, um, we did give him a different substrate than what we usually do. Although for fun, I did throw in some isopods and a bunch of springtails, and those have been keeping everything clean for us too. So it's kind of like a spontaneous bioactive quarantine bin. But I think if he's not, since he's not under there, there he is! Hi, little dude! Oh, I know you're confused as to what's going on, but check him out, guys! He is doing so well, and you know, actually, I think he might be in blue. I mean, his eyes don't go blue, so we have to look at the rest of his body to see when he's about to shed. He has shed twice for us now. This will be his third shed, so he's growing pretty quickly, and he's got a lot of meat on his bones now. He's holding his body up really well, and he does that typical blind snake thing where he just kind of meanders, and he pushes every which way to figure out where he's at, but he's doing really, really well. But here, since since we have him out now and I feel comfortable showing him off, I didn't want to get your hopes up, you know? Like, show you this really interesting snake and then have him pass away. So that's why we've actually had him for about two months now, and now we feel comfortable enough to make this video official and show you some close-ups. So he definitely relies on his sense of smell more than anything else. So you can see his tongue is exploring his surroundings. Oh, he's smelling. Is he gonna smell towards my finger? So, nope, he's just smelling to the left. Who knows what's going on in his little brain right now. But we are so excited at how well this little dude is doing. We don't have a name for him, by the way. We were actually hoping you guys could suggest names in the comments because we don't know what to name him. We also didn't want to name him until we knew he was going to make it, which now we think he will. It's also a blind snake thing to like never stop moving, which makes them difficult to film in focus. You may have noticed that this bin is not going to be his permanent home. I mean, it's a good size for a, a baby right now, but we are planning on getting him a larger enclosure as he grows too. But as with our other blind snake, our nearly headless snake, our garter snake that has no eyes, we are going to have to keep all of the decor, like the caves and the water dish, everything in the same spot so that he can, if they have the cognitive ability to do it, he can memorize and map out his enclosure and then learn where he wants to go. So that will just be increased to a larger scale as he gets into uh, or moves into a larger enclosure, which we plan on building him a, a display enclosure at our zoo. Since now you know about our facility and our plans, now we can tell you all of these cool animals that we're going to put into it when once we open. So I'm going to try to feed him for you guys to show you how well he eats now. He still has not taken it uh, initially from the tweezers, but we're going to put him here. We're gonna see, just for kicks and giggles, I wanna see if he'll eat. I mean, he probably won't, but it doesn't hurt to try. I'm hoping one of these times he just takes it. Come on, smell it, dude. It's right here. Oh. Gotta smell it. Oh, he is smell it. Wow. Okay, he's really yeah, interested. He looks really interested in it. He's never eaten from the tongs before, for the record, but I don't know if he knows how to initiate a food response. Yeah. That's a that's a leaf. Yeah, it's right here. What if it touches your lips? Would that help? Mm. Uh, no, no, nope, not quite there yet. Although we didn't take it there, that was the closest I think he's ever gotten to starting to eat on his own. So that was pretty cool. So we're just gonna continue by offering him the food first to see if he someday starts to take it on his own. But if that doesn't work, then really all I have to do, and he's kind of caught on to this really quickly, I just hold the back of his head. And since he has a little bit of an adorable underbite, I just push open his jaw using that with the head of the mouse. And then I stick it in here, or in his mouth. And then he pretty quickly holds on and starts eating. That's like all I have to do. And then he takes it from there. It's like immediate now. Look, he's already going after that mouse. So that's literally all the help he needs to eat his food is I just have to put the head in and he's so much easier than nearly headless Nick, guys. 
Like, I struggle with Nick because he just doesn't want to eat, but he actually does want to eat and it's great. I think he's gonna grow up and live a normal life other than just a teeny bit of assist feeding at the worst. And who knows, maybe he'll start eating on his own completely here pretty soon too. So there we go, meal is done. It's nice and easy to feed him now, it's great. I'm really excited to watch him grow up. You're gonna come out and say hi? So what an interesting birth defect that you don't see too often in snakes. And I, I don't think I've ever seen it in a rainbow boa before. Now this is our very first rainbow boa, so we're still doing some research since he was kind of a, a surprise uh, acquisition, but we are loving him so far. He's a really cool little snake. So thank you all for watching today's video. And of course, thank you to our Patreon backers for supporting this channel. We love all of you guys. And again, if you have name suggestions for this little guy, let us know in the comments below because we still don't know what to name him. But thank you all for watching. We'll keep you posted on how he does and we'll see you next time.